Good morning. This is Playing to Win with me, Mark Henderson. There, my good friend Brad. How are you, my friend? Fantastic, Mark. How are you, man? How was your fourth? My fourth was really good. Had a great time, man. Had a um, one of our one of our great friends had us over um, with uh, several other families, and we ate and drank and um, played games and uh, had, had a really good time. Yourself? Today's today's the fifth, so we're, we're apparently still rolling with this. This is a well, thing. So you and I are breaking pattern with the rest of the country, working yeah. on a holiday. Yeah, not only that, but I don't know who in my town made the decision, but our uh, allegedly I haven't I haven't fact checked this, so anybody that wants to fact check it's welcome to. But apparently, Friendswood has the longest running uninterrupted parade, not uninterrupted. Continuously con- running, continuously running parades in U.S. history, because um, like during World War II, when everybody was doing things, you know, friends were just like, "Hey, we're doing a parade." I don't know. Um, so that's that's what I hear, and so we're doing our parade today. Uh, they scheduled it for today because uh, uh, they didn't want to do it on a Sunday to interfere with everybody's Sunday plans of of church and all that kind of stuff. And so they're doing it today. And I was like, well, I'd love to have heard that conversation and, and how there wasn't somebody in the room going, well, what about Saturday? <laughs> what about, what about before the holiday? So that after the holiday is not just like an after effect, you know? So, so well, yeah, so as soon as we jump off like, of this. It's, oh, that's, it sounds like they had a lack of self-confidence because to me, Sunday's the day, like, you know, that's why you do it on Sunday show up have give somebody something to do on Sunday unless they're feeling like well no one really wants to come to the, the parade anyway and so they're going to choose a bunch of other things before us and so let's no, figure no. out a less competitive spot no no I mean that so like last night I had to drive down our, our main street to get to uh, the party and people already have tents set up they've already got chairs set up there's cars parked in a strategic you know blocking fashion so no no this is it will be a, a full route um of people i mean it's you know everybody everybody comes out for it you know and um but to do it on the day after i just i just scratch my head i have to talk to somebody that knows somebody you should do that did, did you know did you notice anything about fireworks last night did you have an ex- a unique experience with the the the, prof- the amount of fireworks that were going on was it just usual for you yeah yeah i mean this is the first time we've been in town for the fourth of july in 10 years so we always oh, we have God. a we have a group that we always travel with and we always go to one location and we've gone there forever uh so this is the first time to be home for the fourth in a long time so i have been home on the fourth of july in this neighborhood several years and i have never heard anything like it I, I oh really it, yeah it was like i mean <laughs> it was like gaza strip out there it was like it, yeah. it was just like i could, i mean truly it, it didn't just sound like fireworks it sounded like artillery and machine guns going on all around in all directions for hours i and, yeah. and it was it was smoky the, the, there was like a, a haze coming through the neighborhood i'd never <laughs> experienced anything quite like that it was just it was pretty intense and so I, I even some neighbors were we're not we're not legally a firework neighborhood so people doing them were breaking the law and uh and i had like, don't don't tell on us don't call the cops but but you did and now they're in jail. <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're you know uh, explain to the seven-year-old yeah daddy's a bad man <laughs> bad, bad, bad man so i had an epiphany last week Me too. uh that um i could take the holidays off like i i, 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 I was wondering <laughs> i was wondering why i'm here today but, uh, <laughs> i i i realized the thinking that um i have used days like this those sort of like marginal days because to me it's like a fake holiday the fifth of july that's ma- ma- totally made up and to me i think i have a moral objection to that you know easter monday i i don't think that's, thanks, that's totally thanks for taking it out on me <laughs> well absolutely so <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad to think that that you follow my lead without like well Mark says so yeah. we're, here we, I guess yeah. dutifully we're doing this yeah. um, but I but it, truly I I have it's a mindset set shift and that was that I have used especially these fake holidays but some sometimes real holidays that didn't demand much of me or, or in terms of obligation those are my catch up days like I could use those to be do uninterrupted work and and sort of things and i realized 20 years of this 30 years or whatever that I mean, I'm, I'm i think i'm 75 now right so i've been doing this for about 50 years close. now yeah, yeah. and um 
I just have built it in as a habit that this, like, I resist it. I think I realize that I resist doing things on these kind of holidays. No, I must work. That's my work time. And I, it just occurred to me last week that I didn't have to do that. <laughs> like, I absolutely had absolutely no obligation to do that. And that I can put on my calendar any days of holidays that I want, and I can just observe them. And, I'm going to say that's a little bit bizarre, Mark. I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm going to call you out for that bizarreness because yeah, yeah, there's a, yeah. You well, you say, say you, you say, okay, you call me out because it's duly yeah. called out. However, you are the self-described world's worst vacationer. This is true. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think those psychologies are that far apart. All right. That's, re that's, that's respectable. I, I can, I can take that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, for, for me, um, number one is it takes me two or three days to disconnect from work. Um, but then there's that, that experiential, um, uh, reminder in my brain that whenever I get back to work after vacation, it's going to be a, a mountain of shit that I'm going to have to catch up on. So yeah. I tend to work a little bit every day on vacation just to keep some of the stuff off of the plate. So that whenever I get back, it, it's not as painful. Reentry isn't as painful as it otherwise would be, but yeah, I, I, I can't think of a, I can't think of a vacation where I was a hundred percent disconnected. You know, I don't know that I've ever, I mean, granted as an entrepreneur, well, maybe that's the excuse. Maybe you say, Hey, as an entrepreneur, we always have to work. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I've never had a, I've never had a guilt free vacation I, I, that I can recall. That's interesting. So that does kind of, I mean, there's two concepts that come together and I, we have brought, sort of brought this up in the past, the idea of the containment, the scarcity, like you, you don't as an entrepreneur, well, as an entrepreneur, I have classically felt like there was always more time, which, and you know, I can do a little bit, I can stay a little bit later and, you know, I'm running out of time. I'll just do that on the holiday. I'll do it over the weekend. And it creates this ever growing to-do list, which means there's ever growing list of things that are not done. Mm -hmm. And that is sort of the entrepreneurial plight. And I get that there is an innovation aspect, certainly. But Dan Sullivan, strategic coach, you know, he's, he's like, no, no, don't do that. It's like your, your work time is, is scarce and valuable and contain it and number it and figure out exactly how many days you're going to work this year and plan them well and don't waste a moment of them because you, once it's over, you, you have to go live and you have to do other things. You have to you know, balance your schedule out. And so I've been working my way into that. And, and I, part, of, part of what I'm doing is exactly that, realizing that there are specific days that work. And I've brought into my world really good assistance. So I, I, I mentioned that I haven't checked my, before we started the show, I hadn't checked my email today and I didn't check it. I haven't checked it in three days. And that is normal for me because I have pushed the email off to my assistance team and they do all the triage. And so that has made the, and that departure and re-entry into work almost transparent, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the weekend is fully disconnected. And if, I, if today were a holiday, I would be fully disconnected and I would show up tomorrow and I would not treat it any differently. Today is a if, holiday, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fake holiday. It is not real. There's no such thing as the 5th of July. Uh, the I mean, I know there's the 5th of July, but it's not. Yeah, it does not exist. It goes from the 4th <laughs> to the 6th. The 5th does not exist. Uh, well, and you know, it's, it's funny because I was actually thinking this, this weekend, actually yesterday, um, about uh, – the, about the 4th of July and about the, I don't know why, but I was feeling very, um, patriotic. Yeah. Let's um, go there, man. Cause I, I saw some commercials over the weekend that got me teary eyed. Let's go there. Yeah. A couple of things. Number one is uh, I've got teenage daughters and, uh, and their, their, um, the lack of patriotism is troubling to me because there, there hasn't been anything for, for the youth to, to rally behind other than what all they hear in the media and all they see is how, how America is so divided and so terrible. And, Oh, we, and, and I continue to just try to educate them on, you know, really how we rank as, as a whole. Um, but then I started thinking th this weekend about how this country was created and how it was founded. Um, and, you know, just even talking about taking time off. I mean, the, the commitment that the the founding fathers had to to see this thing through 
was uh, was pretty solid. And the fact that the lead that the the run of leadership from you know from 1776 until today, there's always been a next man up. Yeah, like love them or hate them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's always been someone willing to carry the torch and and keep keep it going. You know, have there been times where we've derailed and um, you know made bad choices? Yes, but the fact that this this has been a uh, what almost a 250 year experiment that has uh, experiment. has been worked uh, has, has continued to work out. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The jury's still open. Still. <laughs> Still litmus. Well, I, I, I'll confess that um, as a child, I, I didn't have much like that either. And you know, I thought of things like the military as, I don't know, I, don't, I had, I had, a, I had a kind of a, a binary, like you know, fighting and war bad, uh, or military discipline. That's my son. You hear my son? He's, he's got this little shaker sound thing. Um, military discipline is badass, right? So I, I don't think I had a definitely did not have appreciation for sacrifice and the history of the country. And it does take. I'm almost fifty years old. Every year, I, I gain a new depth of appreciation of the sacrifice. And I think it's, you know, freedom is not free. Somebody said that the other day, or even yesterday. And I don't like that statement because it just it's too quick. It's too quick to sort of say like, like no, you have no idea. What the, what the costs are, and so I have such gratitude for. It's, it's too are, simplistic. So simplistic, like you just yeah. miss it. Yeah. That um, the sacrifice of so many people, and I and I have a, such a great appreciation for the duality of a military that's made up of men and women who are willing to pay the ultimate price and and do insane things, and have a leadership who may or, may or may not be aligned with what I want them to be doing with that resource. And mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, you have to have both. And it, and it's, it's a very strange thing to kind of, um, reconcile. Mm -hmm. And so I, 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 you know, if, if, if we, if I find us, uh, and we're going pretty deep on this, we're talking about politics, right? But say that an administration is making a, 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 de a decision to do something that I don't agree with. Like, I, I don't, like I'm grateful there's the military is willing to follow those orders. And, and that's certainly the secret to us being it. It's not secret. It's a, it's a critical ingredient in us living the lives we, we have. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and to think about the, the structure that was created, you know, and that's the, that's the, the you know, I don't know if you've ever done like a culture index um, mm -hmm. or one of the, you know, and so my, my, my score is architect, right? So I like to take the ah. complex. I like to simplify the complex. And, um, you know, when you think about, you know, what the, the structure of our country is and the, the core fundamentals of, of the beliefs of our country, it's, it's pretty astounding. Uh, astounding. Why does yeah, that word it. not feel right? Um, astounding. 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 Yeah. Uh, it's it's pretty impressive that um, the way that it's set up, the way that it's structured, and although you know people are trying to pull it one way or pull it the other, it it has remained somewhat where it's supposed to be, um, and and you know we, we continue to to flourish and uh, and I, and I do uh, you know it, it is it's uh, the the when you think about the the program that we do every week, yeah yeah and. You know, if you were to think about the leadership that it took back then to to get people to say, hey, we're going to do this. Let's all do this together. OK, now, how are we going to get all of us beating to the same drum? Can we all agree on one thing? OK, let's put it in writing. OK, now let everybody sign it. John, yeah, you signed yeah. it too big. We don't appreciate that. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, that's um, that's 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 pretty cool. I mean, what do you? What has to happen in a situation like that for everybody to get together and be like, yep, good idea. What, what's brilliant, on, it's genius on so many levels, I think. I think it's genius, and I wonder how intentional, because it seems Im impossibly genius. Doesn't it? Imp impossibly genius that they were able yeah. to figure out something that like has such a foundation of freedom. Because I think that I think it's so interesting. We there there are there are really worthwhile debatable topics in the politics right now. But there's a lot of nonsense that we spend a lot of time on that is that is occupies our time that sits on this foundation of truth that we're in a country where 
you, we don't have to worry about going to jail and never coming out because we think something or say something that somebody else disagrees with. Like that, I, I love to tie it myself down to that concept of like, you know, freedom is, is of, freedom to be an asshole is something that we really strive to, to have in this country. And that's cool. <laughs> you know, to be, to be freedom to be an asshole is actually a nice freedom. Uh, but w this sits on the foundation of freedom to think and to have a thought in your privacy of your home, own home and have the f and not worry that a few days later somebody's going to smash the door down and drag you out and make you disappear. Yeah. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. Because that's not the freedom that many people enjoy still today. Well, and that's that's the thing that I think, you know, I think that's what gets missed in the fodder of politics, right? And that's what that's what the kids of today, at least at least a lot of the kids that I that I know uh, are missing is the the comprehensive understanding of of where we are and what we have versus the rest of the world because people can sit back in in their uh in their in their basement and be internet trolls and talk about how terrible this place is and how it's you know da 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 but i challenge them to point to some place that has has the opportunity the diversity the op you know, the 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 freedom the uh the abundance um it's just you know it, it, it there's something pretty impressive here has been built and when you think about it as a as an organization, um, you know, that's the, the complexity of it all and, and where it's evolved to, um, you know, whether you're big or small government, it's still, yeah, uh, for it's sure. still a, a impressive what's been built and continuing to. Well, I, as I put the headphones on my son, who's listening to this, I want to hear this important stuff, but I, we've talked about this before. I, the ethos of the, of the United States, I think is because we look at there's so many measurements right now, and there have been for decades about education and economic prosperity and all that. And, and you can really write your own sort of formula on what you decide is good or bad. And so a lot of people can say, but you know, it's amazing. And somebody else can say, no, it's terrible for these measurements. And I and I think that the education and the ingredients and, and all the and the output and the economic indicators, those, those are not nothing. But I, I do think I st I've said this before, freedom so oversimplifies what I think is so important. It's like a circus over here. I guess. You are, you have got a train wreck going on over there right now. <laughs> I told you it was live without a net. The dog just ran out and then, and my son is just dancing out with two shakers and then the phone was going off uh, and now he's back. Okay. So, um, I think it's entrepreneurship. I think the ethos of it's our particular, you know, entrepreneurship is probably a new word in the in the in the historical lexicon of the United States. But it's not just it's not just that we do what we want. That, I think that's a total total misnomer. It's like the ethos of Ameri of America and the United States is that we got something to do. And we're going to get it done. We're going to scrap our way to it. It's going to be imperfect. Our scores aren't going to be amazing all the time. <laughs> you know, we're not always going to get A's, but we are going to get the job done. Uh, and, and I mean, and, and that's and, and that's where I think that's where I think so many people do a disservice to what you know where we are and where we've been as a country is because much like a much like a business, you know you make bad decisions, you make mistakes, you make errors. Um, and the hopes are is those errors don't drive you to bankruptcy or drive you, you know, out of business or, you know, whatever, but you know, nothing's linearly perfect. Yeah. And so I think that's where, you know, if, if, if companies behaved the way that, that the, uh, the country does from time to time, they wouldn't survive because they would sit there, they would have the entire employee population pointing at that one decision that was made over and over and over. This is wrong. This is wrong. You, yeah. you know, we, you know, and, and it would, it would, uh, it would implode. Um, and so I think, I think that's where, you know, it's perfectly imperfect. Perfectly. Yeah. I mean, even if you mentioned bankruptcy, it's so, I think it's so, I was thinking about it in a kind of comical way because we think about, there's a lot of ways to vilify companies who use bankruptcy and people who use bankruptcy. But but think about it. It's in a country where we have enough prosperity where we can say like, hey, you messed up, Mulligan. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a hundred people who are like, oh, God, they're not going to pay me. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. It's not fair. And they yeah. just, and they're, and like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oops. My bad. I had that. I've lost, I've had, I've definitely had clients who bank, went bankrupt me on me. And I was like, I'm not going to get that invoice. And it stung. And it really stung. And you know what? No one went to jail. And we tried again. And then, there, and I, many, I'm actually thinking of somebody in particular who, whose company I was, <laughs> I don't like, sir. What is this, Hannah Montana? <laughs> you get the best. <laughs> um, it's a CD. He has no idea what a CD is. Uh, <laughs> Blow his mind with the cassette tape or an eight track oh or VHS. Oh. Uh, what was I saying? I truly have no idea. Um, uh, uh, bankruptcy Mulligan. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, no. So, I uh, so I have uh, I have friends to this day who worked for a company who at the time I met them was a client of mine and told me one day that they, I was not getting their money because they had just filed a bankruptcy. And so uh, it was, you know, that's a, that's a gift. That's a, I mean, and it's, it's, it, I think it's a gift that that's a, we, that's a world we can live in and that, you know, it's, it's soft bumpers. It's pa it's padded walls of yeah. an economic system that allows us to play pretty hard. I mean, yeah. so it, we well, are, and, the, the economy of the United States is is like full contact hockey with all the pads and helmets. Yeah, it's great. Well, and, and keep in mind, uh, as someone who was staring down the barrel of a of a company bankruptcy, you know, years ago, it it, it isn't a uh, it isn't a complete mulligan. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I mean it, it's not it's not a uh, it's, it's not a, a complete you know, push the button, do over, you know, that, that individual or that organization, depending upon the type of bankruptcy or, or mulligan they get is a, is a complete annihilation for a, a relative period of time. Yeah. Yeah. For so, sure. Yeah. But you know, the, the fact that you can recover, um, is once again, the greatness of America. It is. I, I, I I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a, fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of this country. I'm a fan of the debate. I'm a fan of the ability to, 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 to like yeah, that. man, I, I guess it is. I more, there's, I, I grew up in California. I have every checklist, liberal kind of thing to fight for every kind of animal and social liberty that you, you could fight for. I, I have a, I have a, some compassion and desire. You got the for, patches. But, I, <laughs> but I, I, in the end, I've got more, you want to play some music? Yeah. You talk talk to mommy. Mommy can get you set up. Uh, I think that uh, I just have gained, gained more and more gratitude for all of this come before and all the opportunity and appreciation for this duality of youthful exuberance to change things that need to be changed. And uh, what's the opposite of youth? Oldful. Cur curmudgeoned. <laughs> old, yeah. Staunch. Uh, uh, understanding of the price you have to pay and that you have to choose battles well. And it it's important to choose battles of significance, meaning like if you're going to sacrifice, it should be something of timeless value. And we are sitting on a deep foundation of seriously timeless value. And so much of it we take for granted. So much of it is transparent. So much of it was just behind the scenes. Feeling. It really is. I mean, and I, I think that's, that's what bothers me. Uh, especially upon reflection and, you know, around the 4th of July is, is the amount that's taken for granted. The, the, the effort that was put into getting us here and how easily people say this sucks. Um, yeah. And that, that to me, that, that, that's, that, that's unfortunate that people, you know, granted how many people actually believe that versus how many people are saying that because today we live in a clickbait society and everybody wants a response. Um, it's, it's hard to say, but you know, it, how quickly people can lose perspective or, or just ignore, you know, what, what we have, which is opportunity. Well, I agree on an individual level. And at the same time, I spotted I was on, on Sunday, yesterday, mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah. Uh, CBS Sunday morning, I think, was on. Oh, yeah. and, and they were talking about ants. Ah, I saw that one. Yeah. So do you remember he started talking about how 
I think it was the, 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 the ant guy. He said, if you, if you look at these ants, they're like, they're, it's, they're terrible at it. They're terrible at anting. Like they're not smart. They get lost all the time. They're very confused. And yet, if you take a step back, the ant colony is amazingly efficient and the things they do are mind blowing. And he said, if you basically boil this down to that, if you want the system to work really well, it's really works best. If the constituents aren't very smart, <laughs> if they just kind of do their job very repetitively and follow a process follow the guy in front of them, yeah. fo follow the process, even if they're not great at following the process, it, it's exceedingly efficient. So we, we do have, um, I, I think both the country by design for sure. And we've got, human nature and human nature is largely wired to have that polarity of a youthful exuberance to change things and a oldful conservative tying down to timelessness. And so on a micro level, you, just, you look at your children and you think it's so disappointing that they don't appreciate, hopefully they could appreciate someday, but they are going to get older and they're going to have experiences and they're going to be humbled by life. And so they'll have that experience. But from, from a the macro gratitude level, it works that way. We're supposed to have people at each end of the spectrum pulling and causing that friction and bringing ideas and, and trying to pull them apart and test them and pressure test them. And if you want timeless outcomes, you're going to have to put them through the ringer. And the best way to put them through the ringer is sort of those extreme put in, into kind of a crucible to to test them out and so i i think that as painful as it can be and as confusing and and, and argumentative as we can be with people who are absolutely legitimately nuts uh it's actually how the system works at its best with that strong polarity and a crucible in the middle to kind of fire test uh, how to evolve our uh, our culture i can't think of a better way to wrap up the fifth of july session than with that statement there i couldn't agree more that way I can't talk us out of being on time. Well, Brad, I'm grateful for our time together. I'm grateful, grateful for, a, for being uh, in a country where we can just kind of go live and say stuff and nobody's going to knock on my door about the stupid things I said. And I do stay, say stupid things. Amen. So, so um, cheers to uh, living to uh, in, in, in my favorite country. brother. Cheers to America. <laughs> cheers to America, man. All righty, brother. We will see you next time on Playing to Win with your friend mark and my friend brad who might be your friend too see you next time <laughs> see you brother Bye.